a minute or two before we get started. Maybe like 401. So we're recording. Wait, why so don't I see Eric's, oh. Eric's name anywhere? Uh, Eric is finishing up another meeting and then he's going to pop right on. So he messaged me earlier. <laughs> but, um, so thanks for everyone for joining us today um, as part of our career webinars in biology. So today's webinar is going to be about careers in conservation and natural resources and Dr. Galerowitz is going to uh, walk us through um, some some careers and some um, opportunities for students. Um, just to remind you, we have two workshops after this this particular webinar. We have one on April first um, for careers in biomedical sciences, and then one on April fifteenth um, where we'll have a student panel. So, um, Dr. Glaritz, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, sounds good. Um, so my plan is to talk about um, different careers, different paths that you can take, how you might get there, um, ways to look for jobs, including internships and summer jobs. I pulled some examples of current jobs that are posted out there that you can go and apply for right now for the summer, and then some advice and things to think about too. So if anyone has any questions, um, just interrupt and, and I don't have, I can't see the chat, but um, if you know, someone to let me know if there's questions at the time, and I do want to thank Dr. Gehring. So Dr. Gehring and I put this together a year ago, and we had shared thoughts um, about uh, it, just what we thought was important, and and things to share with students and things to think about. So you certainly can go to Dr. Gehring or any of the other biology faculty that work in this area too, because. Um, it's, it's a small field and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and everyone's got different experiences and so they might have different tidbits that they can share with you. There we go. Okay. So when we think about careers in conservation, natural resources, they're really quite varied and, and up front, I'm a fisheries biologist. So everything I'm going to say is going to have that twist to it. And those are going to be the examples that I think of first. I've tried to incorporate um, examples from wildlife and and other terrestrial type jobs. But um, I always tell students like whatever you are interested in science would or communication or writing or art, there is a role for that in fisheries. And so these are just some examples of careers that you could go into in conservation and natural resources, but it's really unlimited what you want to do. And the face of conservation um, is just changing all the time too. And so what the career names or what we're thinking of right now, I guarantee are going to be different in 20 years. Um, they're just going to grow and expand and become cooler and cooler. So um, some jobs that you might hear of with in conservation natural um, resources might be something like an environmental consultant. So this would be um, with a consulting agency and it might be doing water quality for businesses that have to meet certain standards for their business. It might be um, constructing ponds or wetlands for people that want to make changes to their land. It might be working with farmers and thinking about what sort of conservation measures that they can do on their own land that's going to benefit them and the ecosystem. You can go into a policy direction where you're working with lawmakers and local governments to think about the implications of what they're doing and how that that affects the ecosystem. If you go into fisheries, you could be a fisheries manager. So a manager is um, 
is going to be the person that is working with anglers and angling groups and thinking about regulations and maybe habitat changes to make to a lake versus a, a research biologist who's a who's in fisheries is going to be collecting data what's going on with lake trout in lake michigan you know working with other researchers to make recommendations for then the managers to to implement you can go into land use planning so you know thinking about um, different demands on the land and how that um, should be constructed in order to um, have a healthy system you can go into education so maybe this is teaching camps or classes or it, working with children working with adults on thinking about our natural resources and so on so this can be in fisheries it could be in wildlife it could be uh, with forests it could be with soils all those fall in this field of conservation and natural resources so where could you work if you're looking for this um, type of career and i think a lot of times um, you know it's talking with students they know they're really interested in working with animals let's say well what does that look like and what does that mean like and and thinking about the type of job or the type of place that would support that. Um, and certainly over your course of your career, it changes as well. So maybe there's more hands on work with animals um, when you're first out of college, but then as your responsibilities increase, that job changes or not. It's really up to you and how you want to pursue it. So the places that we most likely see hiring students um, in conservation natural resources would be first and foremost what we think of as our natural resource management agency. So those might be federal, like US Fish and Wildlife Service. It could be state. So in Michigan, that would be the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. And in Michigan, our tribes also have natural resource departments as well that hire biologists and managers. And so I um, put the put some different logos up here. So like the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians. Um, I'm going to talk about a, a tribal summer job that's available a little bit later here. Um, so those are great places to start, and those would be what we refer to as agency um, and government jobs. You might hear one or the other. Local governments like soil and water conservation districts also hire students that work in conservation natural resources. We might have non-government organizations, and that could be something worldwide like the World Wildlife Federation or the Nature Conservancy, or it might be local conservation groups. So in um, uh, in Mount Pleasant, we have the Chippewa Watershed Conservancy, which is a, a local group. Um, and Dr. Walker and I were just talking about Bundy Hill, which is one of their properties that they manage. And, and uh, they you know work on education and management of those properties, like managing invasive species that grow there. There's also, um, organizations that focus on policy um, in the Great Lakes region, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission would be one of those agencies that supports research and supports specific management like sea lamprey control in the Great Lakes, but also works with um, different government institutions on creating different policies. And then, of course, there's education. So if you, you know, want a position in academia, like a university and doing research, you could go that direction too. Okay, so one thing to think about when you're thinking about your future career is what level of education you're going to need so, um, so that you're preparing for it throughout college and beyond. And I wanna run through maybe the types of jobs we would see when you're first, uh, first out of school that you would most likely get. So as an undergrad or when you're in school, so as an undergraduate working on your bachelor's degree and here at CMU, um, students that are typically interested in going into natural resources and conservation would do our ecology evolution and conservation degree. Um, during the summer, you would look for internships. These could be seasonal positions um, and technician positions. And a lot of times upon leaving, um, with your bachelor's degree, you might start off in a technician position, and that's where you're going to have the most hands on work. So if you want to be out there handling fish or handling birds or sampling plants or or taking insect um, 
samples and identifying what's in there, that would most likely fall under these types of positions. One question that we get a lot is, well, are there jobs? There are a ton of jobs. Um, most of the technician jobs are going to be term positions, which means it is not a permanent forever position that's there. It might be a one year term, it might be a two year term. And that doesn't mean that once you're done with that two year period, you're done. It could be renewable, but depending on the agency they hire, um, they're, they're restricted on how long they can hire a person. It might also be grant related too. So they only have so much money for this period, but the funding will be renewed and it, it's there in the future. One thing um, students in natural resources and conservation should be thinking about is whether or not they want to go to graduate school. And many times um, in our field, uh, students go to a master's degree um, and sometimes on for a PhD, but the master's degree is going to open up more, um, a wider range of positions, more responsibility, and and might get you to that final career position that you want. So again, this would include technician positions, but if you want to be a fisheries manager with the DNR, so you're working with the public, you're out sampling fish, you're manipulating habitat, you're thinking about regulations, you're going to need a master's degree. If you want to be you know, a researcher, so you are a research biologist for an agency, you're going to at a minimum need a master's degree for that. So the benefits of this are um, more money, more permanence, um, more authority, more freedom um, in what you do, um, could be less time out in the field. So again, there's that balance of what do you really want to do and how much time do you, you know, how, and, and I'm making broad generalizations here. So, the, you know, this, it isn't every position is exactly like this. Um, you do not need to go to graduate school, however, right after your undergrad degree. Um, I know researchers and managers that went directly after graduate school, and I know researchers and managers and biologists that worked um, coming out of their undergraduate degree. They had different positions in the field of fisheries and wildlife. They gained experience, um, it, and so it's it's a matter of you knowing you. What do you want to do? What do you have available for you at the time? Uh, for some some people know, I know I want a master's degree and they've done the work to find a program um, right when they're done and they're set to go. Others want to get experience. I'm 22. I want to go work in Alaska for six months. I want to go work in Central America for a year. Um, want that flexibility or I don't know exactly in what field I want to work in um, with my my graduate degree. And so you go and meet people and you get experiences and that helps you narrow down the direction that you want to go in. Um, that, you know, I think um, one thing to think about too, as you think about master's degrees in the future is um, one, you want to find a program where you're going to be supported. So this isn't taking on more years of debt. You want to find a program where you have funding, your tuition is covered, um, you're receiving a stipend. And so it is a job. It is a major step in your career. Um, you also want to think about, you know, how are you going to be able to network within that graduate program? So if you, um, I'm trying to think of an example. If you really want to work in the Great Lakes and you want to be a Great Lakes fisheries biologist, um, how you know? Think about where then you want to do your graduate work. Where you're going to be meeting biologists that are going to work in the, that are working in the Great Lakes that are going to be hiring in the future, where you can meet those people and start interacting with them. Okay, and then finally, um, there's many biologists and conservation and natural resources that also go on um, to complete their PhD. I think I don't have data on this right now, but I would say this is becoming more and more common, um, especially as more research biologist positions open up, especially in federal agencies 
or if you want to go into academia and have a faculty position where you're able to do research and teach as well. So there's lots of options. There's not one perfect path. Um, it's different for every single person, depending on what they're interested, what their goals are, um, what their life is at that point. And the more information that you can get and the more people that you talk to, the better understanding um, you'll have of yourself and what you can do with this. Um, but I'm gonna talk about where to look for jobs. And I'm, I focused on like jobs that all the undergrads can go and apply for right now. But on these same job boards, there are positions for at the master's level and at the PhD level. And one thing I suggest is, you know, if you're if you're not sure what to do, get on these job boards and look at the jobs and see the range of jobs that are out there. What do they pay? What are they asking for? What experience do you need? And that will also give you a sense of, you know, what what should I be looking at if I want that type of position? Okay, so I thought I would step through right now um, where all of you could be looking for jobs. So um, if if we've met for advising at all, I've probably brought this up and like, what are you doing? Where are you from? What's your plan for the summer? Um, and I really love it when students are in the position that they're able to turn down jobs, right? So that they have um, really treated this as another class, um, as another, as their job to get a job and they're out there actively searching um, to get that experience. So I'm gonna step through different places where to apply and jobs that I saw, see out there right now, um, and then other things to think about afterwards. So um, one place to look for federal positions, so this would be with Fish and Wildlife Service or the US Geological Survey, which despite its name, hires a lot of biologists. Um, so those type of federal agencies, they advertise um, on, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name. They advertise on USA Jobs. How could I blank on that? They advertise on USA Jobs. <laughs> And one of the programs that they have is something called Pathways. And the Pathways program is specifically for students that are currently enrolled and then recent graduates. So this is to set on federal careers. And this isn't just in, in natural resources, but this is for all different types of federal agencies. So one place to check for a job uh, now or right after graduation would be through this Pathways program. And you would do this through uh, USA Jobs. So, um, you know, as you move through, there's different sites and they're changing all the time and being updated. But the US, USA Jobs site is where all these federal applications um, must be submitted. And there are specific formats and the type of structure that you have for a USA job application that's different than the structure if you're applying for a job with Department of Natural Resources. And you want to become familiar before uh, you get there and you're like, I don't know what's going on with this site. So I'm gonna give a little information in a second on that, but this is just an example of, um, I went to USA Jobs and I looked at, I think I looked up maybe wildlife and there are, student trainee positions right now available available uh, through the Department of Interior Interior through the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And we actually um, uh, posted last the week or the week before um, Carrie Paquette, who is with the Saginaw uh, uh, tribe here in Mount Pleasant, had forwarded us information about lots of pathways positions this summer available with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So um, this is just an example, right? I went really quick, summer jobs available, who can apply, um, gives a range of salaries, gives the closing date. So this was just posted a month ago, closes tomorrow. Don't worry, there'll be more that are posted there. Um, one thing that I did post on the Ecology, Evolution and Conservation Biology Blackboard shell 
is um, these webinars that came across my email about using USA jobs. So you can go to the, the EEC or Ecology Evolution and Conservation Biology Blackboard shelf, and they have webinars on using USA jobs. So how do you search for a job there? How do you write a resume for these federal positions? And how do you interview for these types of federal positions as well? So these are free and you can go and sign up for those. I'll talk about the, the Blackboard shell um, in a little bit here, if you're not on it and, and how you can get on it. So look for all these hints. Um, I'm seeing on Twitter a lot, if you're not on Twitter, there are a lot of scientists that are posting opportunities right now for summer positions. Um, there are people that are reviewing applications that are posting hints all the time, like, hey, if you're applying for a job, make sure that your the files that you submit have your last name in the file, right? <laughs> like little little things, you know, it's not just resume version two. It has your last name, right? So mine would be Glarwood's resume. So when they are looking for my file, they can find it. Okay, another place that you can look for jobs right now for the summer is through the Student Conservation Association. And this is a clearinghouse for more federal positions. So if your dream job is working for a national park, you would go through Student Conservation Association and their website is vthesca.org. And I pulled up a couple of job announcements that are posted right now at SCA. One is this awesome one. It's a native trout conservation intern at Yellowstone National Park. So seriously, how cool would it be to go to Yellowstone for the summer and work on trout? And so if you look at it, they're working on cutthroat trout, monitoring lakes and streams. Um, you have to you know, be able to drive, hike, right? Swim, you know some basic techniques. Um, Awesome if you can drive a four wheel drive vehicle, but not necessary, right? So this could be a skill that you can you can learn. Now, the cool thing with SCA is that you submit one application and all your letters of reference are submitted as well. And then you can apply for as many jobs um, as you want. So you can apply for fisheries internships at national parks all across the country with one application. And I asked once um, in uh, non-pandemic times, um, oftentimes there's a rep from SCA that comes to campus and meets with students. And I asked, is there a job available for everyone? And he said, yes, they have so many positions that they are trying to fill. Um, it's just, if you wanna work in Alaska or Hawaii, those are a little bit more competitive. So, <laughs> but there's a job. Um, and I've had students work at national parks in Utah, I've had students do uh, stream electrofishing for trout in the Appalachian Mountains, you know, lots and lots of cool things that you can do for the summer. Now, you don't make a ton of money. They're providing you with housing um, and travel. So that's something, you know, if you're, you're thinking about money, and that is a very serious thing to consider as well, because there, there are, um, that's the reality, is that um, you have needs that you have to think about too. But, while you're there, all your costs are covered. Here's another one um, that I also thought was really cool at a Naval Air Station. So, uh, Clint, maybe this is for you. This is uh, spotted turtles. It's at least reptiles and, and not fish. Um, bald eagles, bad acoustics, right? So, again, really cool opportunities that this took me maybe three minutes to find on sca.org. So lots of positions out there. Now this one, um, if you noticed, is August through May. So the SCA has short-term positions. So they'll have summer, fall, spring, um, up to a year long position. So some of them you're actually um, would be great. Like right after graduation, you go to Hawaii for a year and live there and work at a national park there. Okay, another place to look would be with the state of Michigan and you can go to the internship program with the state. This is gonna have internships um, in all different areas. So if you're interested in law or finance, 
um, some biology. So I went to that website at the very top. This is what <laughs> the only thing I found through that site and it is uh, seasonal park workers. So working at state parks that you can apply for. So if you want more of um, definitely people skills, um, uh, depending on where you live, if maybe you need something closer to home. If you're from Michigan for for certain reasons, those are great jobs to get. There's a lot of state positions that also come um, it, like through my email that I post on the EEC Blackboard shell. So this is one that just came last week. This is for a short term worker position and short term workers are what the state calls um, basically interns and they hire short term workers during school. So while while you are a student and I think for a year or two after graduation, you can you can get a short short term worker position. So this one's down in Play, Plainwell and it's focusing on Lake Sturgeon, the Kalamazoo River, um, doing a lot of field and laboratory work. A lot of the fisheries research stations for the DNR um, hire these short term worker positions. And you can contact you can contact the DNR offices at any time and, and ask them about availability of these positions. You can also look at job boards at professional organizations. So I just picked two here. AFS is the American Fisheries Society, and that's the professional society for fisheries biologists and the Wildlife Society. Um, Surprise, surprise is the professional society for wildlife biologists, but there's lots of different professional organizations out there. Um, wetlands, Great Lakes, uh, herps. I'm sure there's a bird specific one um, that you can probably have a job board that you can go to and uh, check out jobs specifically for those areas. So that is what I did. <laughs> So I first went to the American Fishery Society um, job board and it lets you do a lot of filters. So you could put in when you're when you're available to work, what type of position you are looking for. Um, so I was just looking for summer internships and I found this position that was just posted this week. Um, they are looking for a sea lamprey research technician out of Michigan State. And so if you look, dates are flexible. Um, working at, so this isn't down in Lansing. This is actually at the Hammond Bay Biological Station. And that is up near Alpena on Lake Huron. That's where most of the sea lamprey research is done in the state. Um, they're looking for some college level coursework, right? So it's not, you know, you haven't taken a bunch of fisheries classes yet, right? They're looking for, you know, maybe a freshman um, that is interested in doing this work. Um, gives you the salary and how to apply. I'm just gonna say this is this works really cool. They're doing some cool work using pheromones um, to help control sea lamprey, which are invasive species. So I'll throw that out. Just posted Monday, so I know this position is available. And then I went to the Wildlife Society and found this bird rehabilitation internship um, in California. So again, I was just looking for a summer internship. And this is one of the um, one of the positions that came up. And so, if you're interested, maybe more in vet related or wildlife rehab, this would be a really cool type of internship to get for the summer. Now, both the American Fishery Society and the Wildlife Society have lots of job seeking tools on there now as well. So, hints about finding jobs. Um, at the Wildlife Society, you can submit your resume and professional biologists will review it. Like, how cool is that? And, you know, ask me if you're applying for a position and want me to review your resume and your cover letter, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, last fall, I had alums um, of my fisheries course come back and talk to the students and every single one of them volunteer to review students resumes as well. They all do hiring in their positions that they have now. So, you know, take advantage of those opportunities to get more help to make sure that you're putting together the best package possible for um, for you to represent you the best. 
OK, so besides job boards at the professional organizations, there's a couple of universities that have done a really great job compiling information and people know that, oh, I want to advertise this job in conservation and natural resources. This is where I should send it. And probably the most well known is Texas A&M's Wildlife and Fisheries Job Board. And so if you just Google Texas A&M Wildlife and Fisheries Job Board, it is going to come up. I've submitted jobs there. Um, it, there's state positions that get submitted there, federal positions that get submitted there, uh, internships to to PhD level positions that are submitted there as well. So this is one place I direct students to. Michigan State has a great board. Uh, North Carolina State has a great board. Um, Oregon State has a great board. So uh, lots of people that are compiling these opportunities there. Um, and it changes quickly. So now I saw that you can actually set an alert. So if a new job meeting uh, your filters is posted, you're going to get an email that a new job is available. So that is pretty awesome. So, of course, I went to uh, Texas A&M and I was looking for summer positions and I found one in Traverse City that was posted on the Texas A&M uh, website there. So this is looking for invasive species survey technicians um, that are going to go out and do sampling and then do data entry related to it. So again, this was just posted up there. These jobs are available. Um, so if you, you know, are from the Traverse City area or have an opportunity for housing up there, maybe this is something you would be interested in looking for. Okay, and then one thing that I've mentioned um, a couple of times is the EEC Blackboard Shell. So if you um, sign your Ecology, Evolution, and Conservation Biology major, you should be added to the EEC Blackboard Shell. If you're not, call the department office, and the number is 989-774-3227. Or if you're a different major, you know, you're like, oh, I'm a biomed cell molecular major, but I think I might be interested in EEC, add, get yourself added too. Call the department office and add yourself. Um, we use this for general department announcements like scholarship um, availability, but this is a place where anything that comes across my email, I post in terms of jobs and I know others do as well. So I don't actively go out and search for jobs like I'm showing you on here, but if I get something and it's perfect, I send it there and you're going to get an email then it, with that announcement to it. So this is one that just came across my email um, at the end of last week. So this is with the Bay Mills Indian tribe um, and it's looking for a wildlife biologist for the summer. And this came to me from a former student who got her first jobs. Um, I saw there was a, a message about posting the number for the department in the chat. So if, if Dr. Walker, if you don't do it, awesome. Okay. Um, so these came um, from a former student who got her first jobs working for Bay Mills. Um, she worked there in the summer and then post-graduation, she went back to Bay Mills. And so she was really excited to share the announcements with CMU students because she loved it and wanted to share it. So the other day, I think there were three different jobs with Bay Mills that were posted out there. So again, like, you know, get on, get on that Blackboard shell in addition to looking at these other places. So that uh, DNR state short-term worker position with the DN that I talked about with the Sturgeon down in Plainwell, um, I don't know if that was on a job board, but it was definitely on our EEC Blackboard shell. So make sure you find them. I'm also seeing again on Twitter, um, a couple of the other tribes were sharing summer jobs that they have too. So once you get looped into those areas, you're gonna start seeing, like recognizing like, oh, hey, if I follow this person, they retweet jobs that they see for students. Okay, so what, other things should you think about besides like going and looking for a job? Um, so I think probably this applies to every single career is, you know, you you need to be flexible. Um, it, it, there's 
you know, if you want to work on the Great Lakes, you're going to need to live in the Great Lakes region, right? You can't live, you can't live in, you know, Utah and be a Great Lakes biologist. Um, if, you know, if you want to do work with bats, you're going to have to be in an area that, you know, where the bats are. Um, and sometimes that means taking positions and moving, um, moving to get that experience. One of the things that I've, I've found um, in my fisheries management class, I invite biologists to come back and, and talk about their careers. And everyone talks about the path that they took and the different positions that they had and how much they learned and how it led them to a new position. And so, you know, if you have an opportunity, but it's not, you know, in the exact town that you want to live in, um, you know, the, those are things to think about, like, why do I want to be there? And, and sometimes, you know, there's family reasons or there's reasons why you need to be in a geographical region. But there's other times um, by making that move and trying something new um, and, and stepping outside your comfort zone, which is definitely something that the guest speakers in my classes have, have brought up again and again is pushing yourself. Um, it's just going to open up new doors. The field, all of these fields within this area are actually very small and, and very connected. And so you're going to meet people um, that are just going to, you know, connect you with others. And you're going to start conversations and find out about new positions um, or learn new things to get prepared for the next step that you want to take. So along with that, um, keep in mind that you're always building relationships too. Um, it, it, you know, it is it is kind of um, awesome how small of a field um, these all are. It, it, it is someone knows someone. Um, yesterday was the Michigan American Fisheries Society um, conference, the second day of the conference, and at the business meeting, um, it, it was, it was pretty cool watching my former students who are now biologists with the DNR and biologists with the tribes, um, who came through CMU and watching what they're doing all throughout the state. And I'm so glad that we have that relationship where, um, I played a part in that, but now I can call them and say, Hey, I have this awesome student that's looking for, for, um, you know, information on Lake Sturgeon. Can you help them out? I just emailed a former student who works for Fish and Wildlife Service earlier this week. I had students that were looking for information about lamprosides and and lamprosides in the Chippewa River. And within two hours, he got back to me with a ton of information and he's happy to talk to them. And he's gonna be, you know, putting lamprosides in the Chippewa River in June and they can come out. and. It's just building those relationships. So remember that, you know, in your classes, um, when you're working with your other students, when you if you go to grad school, who you're working with, you're always building those relationships, and that's that's going to help you out. Make sure your resume is up to date. So think about, you know, the, um, you know, what you're doing when you're acquiring new skills, when you get those new experiences. Um, you never know when you're going to need it, right? You might have a guest speaker in a class and you think their research is really interesting and you talk to them after class and you're like, oh, well, send me a resume and you haven't opened it for a year, right? Now you got some scrambling to do. So, you know, just keep working on it and I'll get to come back to this in a little bit, but just keep working on that. Um, and this is for the, I know the faculty on, on here too, like, like we have to do the same thing. Like we always, we it's, it's like, I literally have to put it on my to-do list sometimes is like, go back to it, make sure everything's up to date. Um, make sure that you talk to your references that you, you are asking, um, you know, to, to give you feedback and not just, will you be my reference, but Share what's going on with you. Why are you applying for these positions? What are you interested in? Um, I would say, let's see, in the past two weeks, I've done two different reference calls 
Um, one for a former graduate student. So it was it's for a biologist position with the DNR. One is for a current undergraduate for a, a DNR short term worker position. Um, the reference questions are never can they identify fish? <laughs> They're never that. They are how do they work in a team? How do they handle conflict? What do they do if um, if there is conflict? How do they respond? Do they show up on time? Um, do they complain? I mean, they word it in a much more professional way, but those are the things that I'm being asked. And so I want to know something about you. Um, one of the positions, um, you know, I had a, a long conversation with my graduate student before before they had applied for this position and I was able to say this is why they're applying for this position. They are very serious about this position. Um, and I could expand on that and that's because she gave me a call and we like talked through it before she applied for it um, and she got offered it. Um, so that's pretty awesome, right? But I knew that information. One thing um, I I'm going to run out of time. Uh, one thing I really suggest that I've seen um, on uh, resumes is instead of listing your references, give some information. So I've sat on several search committees for the DNR. And one thing I saw one time was at the end of the resume, instead of just listing, um, listing the reference and the contact information, they included a couple sentences about how, uh, what that relationship was. So for, let's say a student worked in my lab and they listed me as a reference. It might say something like, um, you know, Dr. Galarowitz was my, my research advisor at Central Michigan University. She can speak to um, my great work ethic and my dedication to research or whatever other fantastic things I can speak about, right? And what that does then is you're sharing even more information about yourself. So all those awesome things that you just can't say like, hey, I'm awesome, right? You might not be comfortable, but you can say this, this person thinks these things about me and it's more information that you're sharing. And I know when I see that and I call a reference then, guess what I'm gonna ask about? Well, tell me about these things that, you know, they listed, right? They said that, you know, they have a great work ethic. What do you think? So it it is like, it's only setting you up for success to do that. You you are setting the stage for yourself. Um, you want to get experience. Any experience that you can get is awesome. Um, I've had students who, you know, might need a DNR biologist in my class, speak to them. Biologist says, hey, give me a call um, if you ever want to help out, like over spring break. They go volunteer over spring break, and by summer, they've got a position with them, right? Um, but it's it, there's so many things that you might not think of that are really important, um, and you don't need them all. But if you can back up a, a trailer with a boat on it, that's a huge skill. Um, you can identify insects. That's a huge skill. Um, all these things. So keep building it. Um, talk to your faculty, talk to other students, but really think about your summers and what you're able to do. Um, you got to apply, 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 apply. Like just apply for everything. And then It'll be awesome when you say, I'm sorry, I already accepted a position. That is great. Okay, and then I wanna point you, if you didn't catch Eric, um, Eric Davis's video or the seminar that he did last week to the Career Development Center. And so you can go back and watch that and it's pretty awesome. And Eric talked about different, um, different services that career services has, like the reach advising, going through your cover letters and resumes, doing mock interviews, all of that is so important. And I, I really, you know, the, the resumes and cover letters, like really have as many people as possible 
look through those documents. Sometimes, and I, you know, I, I don't know how often this happens, but sometimes, you know, if someone gets 200 resumes um, for a position, yeah, if it's messy, if it doesn't make sense, it's not logical, that is quickly going to go in, in the no pile, right? Um, cover letters, there are some places that don't read the cover letter. They're just looking at your experience that you have listed on your resume. I know other people who hire who look closely at those cover letters. One, they want to see how you communicate in writing. Um, two, they want to see what else they can learn about you. So it's another place to show um, how you would be a good fit for that job. And I want to stress that. Yes, of course, these positions are going, are going to benefit you as the applicant. You don't need to say that. Is it going to further your career? Yes, it's going to further your career. That's why you're applying for it, right? But you want to show them how your experiences make you an ideal candidate for that position. And then in Eric's presentation, he also talked about the first impression store, which is in the Bovey Center. And there are professional clothes for free um, that you can get for those interviews. Again, just because you're applying for a conservation and natural resources position, you should not be showing up in ripped jeans and flannel. Don't do it. <laughs> it gets shocking when that happens. You're applying for a job, right? So you still need to, you, you're not going out in the field that day. You're applying for a job. So you need to look professional. And then the last thing um, that I pulled up, this comes from conservationcareers.com and some of the advice is the same, but I thought it was a good list. Um, so their advice is you're not gonna get rich, so you better love it. Um, I don't know any rich uh, natural resource biologists, um, rich in money, but they are rich in experience, right? And their love of outdoors and getting to do this awesome job. Um, but you're going to make a living. You're, you're going to get paid and and do fine in grad school. You are going to be able to, you know, to make a living doing this. Um, but do it because you love it. I mean, that's that's the most rewarding part of this. Um, become familiar with the jobs that are available. So get on those job boards. Look to see what's out there, what it takes, the type of education that's needed, how much they pay, what the expectations are. You have to make things happen for yourself, right? So you have to be putting in the applications. You have to be getting that experience. And, you know, like I mentioned before that my guest speakers have said, you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone and and go for things that you think, um, you know, maybe, maybe are a little uncomfortable or are a stretch for you. Go for it. Try it. See how it turns out. It's going to, it's going to turn out awesome. Um, of course, everyone's looking for people that are passionate about the field, but you also need that experience. And even as a freshman, right? Talk to faculty here, right? If we were, um, you know, beginning to get ready for the summer field season. We've got samples to pick in the lab. Um, in, you know, if you are going back home for the summer, think about what's close to you. You know, is there a DNR station? Um, is there a wildlife rehab center? Is is there something or, you know, do you know someone who might know someone that would have some experience for you? Um, so <laughs> I think this is funny. Get educated. I don't know anyone says that, but don't stop learning. That's probably the biggest thing. So um, in every career, you always have to be learning, right? We're in science. Everything is changing all the time. So you need to be learning and you need to know the technology. And yes, if you want to be a fisheries technician, um, you're gonna be sampling a fish a lot, but you also need to be technologically savvy too. You need to know how to use the software. You need to be able to adapt because things are changing and you always have to learn. Um, you are a professional, you're a professional now. So, when you're going into these positions and you're applying for them and you're you're searching these, please go in with a professional mindset. This is your career. Um, you you are thinking like a biologist and keep that mindset with you. Um, act professionally, but also be confident in yourself that you are professional in this field. Um, this is back to the resumes. 
keep those applications clean. Um, at the very beginning, I mentioned that the USA jobs format is different than the state format. It is, and so you have to make sure that you are checking the right boxes um, because some the way like for a, like a state full time position, um, it doesn't go directly if it's going through the state website, it goes through Lansing first and they do the first pass. And so if everything isn't in there correctly, it never even goes to the DNR office that reviews those applications. And it's the same with those federal positions. Everything has to be aligned in the right format or it's not gonna make it past those steps. Uh, practice interviewing. Um, when you, if you interview at a place, write down the questions, keep them somewhere, put them in your phone because you're gonna be asked those same questions in some format ask others that have interviewed. Um, if you're going for a DNR position, come chat with me. I'll tell you questions that I've seen asked um, on those interviews as well and, and things I've seen that you should do and things that you shouldn't do. You should, this is coming from this Conservation Careers website, um, be familiar with different cultures and languages. I would say um, even more than this. Um, I would, um, I hope, um, for everyone that everyone is really thinking about diversity, equity, and equity and inclusion issues and becoming educated and doing that training. Um, I, yeah, so I, I'm just gonna assume everyone's doing this. Um, it is so important and we are seeing more and more that that, um, that employers are asking applicants to address this in their application materials. And it's it's not just words, right? So make sure that you're doing the work and you, you're you learning about issues and you're learning about yourself um, because this is an incredibly important part of this, of any job. And um, yeah, that's, I just want everyone, you should be doing this, but you know, make sure that that you are doing the work. And then finally from conservation careers, they say stay focused. The first job's the hardest to get. It that's that's true, right? But man, I have seen students just grow. They get that first position and then they meet people and then they get that experience. And um it's pretty awesome. So it is a it is a really small field. Um one uh, two, two quick stories looking at the time. One, I got an email from a student who graduated in December. He got offered a job um, in Illinois today and I was so excited. Um, and he's so excited about the experience that he's going to get. So, you know, it took a while, right? I mean, part of it is the pandemic and people not hiring right now, um, but that was really awesome. Um, Lindsay Adams, if you've been on the second floor of biosciences, we've got a poster with with um, some of our alums and the positions that they have. Lindsay got her undergrad degree here. Um, and actually she has not gone to grad school, but she is now a permanent biologist um, with Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, she is just one of these people that has done all of this work and after she graduated, a friend of mine, because it is a small field, a friend of mine who was for Fish and Wildlife Service called and said, completely off the record. This is off the record. This is not a reference check. Just gonna say a name. And he says Lindsay's name. He's like, what do you think? And I was like, she's amazing. He's like, knew it, knew it. He knew by her application materials, he, but he knew that I would know Lindsay. What was my impression, right? Small world. And now Lindsay's one I go to, like, Lindsay, I have someone interested in this. Can you please talk to them? Um, okay, I am done. I got a post-it note because Dr. Linton sent me an email right before this um, that uh, Environmental Protection Agency is, you know, they're, you know, the world is changing, um, science is changing, and they're forecasting hiring a lot of scientists in the future too. And I think we're gonna see this in, in other related areas, so. Okay, that's all I have. But if people have questions, I'd be happy to take them. I will give you a very loud round of applause. Thank you very, <laughs> very much. That was awesome.
I'm ready to change careers. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions for Dr. Galerowitz? I, I actually have just a few um, that, that popped into my head while I was thinking yeah. about this. Um, my kids are a few years off, but this is generally the field they want to go in. So um, you mentioned Twitter, right? And kind of following the jobs that people post. Are you aware of like, if, if people were just getting into this to follow conservation biology, what kind of hashtags or is there like um, a... I'm going to stop sharing. Um, yeah, this was a, a conversation at the American Fisheries Society a couple of years ago, and they just recommended like um, maybe like hashtag jobs, hashtag fisheries, or, you know, like string together different things that you might be interested in. And I think, gosh, I would say in the last six months, too. Um, also, there's just been a lot of interesting science discussions on Twitter and on careers and thinking about like diversity and equity issues related to science as well that um, I've, I've just learned so much through there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm, I have just joined, really started going onto Twitter a lot and I'm surprised by how many jobs there are being yeah. advertised. So I'm always, now I'm really interested in knowing how people how other people are using it. Yep, yep. So I had another question. So let's say you apply for a, um, a bunch of positions and you, you get those positions. What should you be thinking about? Um, I guess what, how would you advise students to think about what job to take? Do you take what's the most interesting or would you encourage students to think more long-term about maybe the skills they get, or does it really matter? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess I, maybe I shouldn't say this, kind of like go with your gut feeling on it. So I would first think about how does it make you feel like the people you interacted with? <laughs> and, um, you know, if you get like a, huh, I don't know about this, to me, that's a red flag. Like, that's easy, no on that one. Um, I. I would I would ask what other people who had that position are doing or where the, you know, if you're filling a position, where did that other person go? Um, you know, there's some jobs that um, might be sort of, I don't want to say dead end, but you might, you might get very limited um, experiences with it. So, yeah, I guess a kind of a combination of both, like think about real, what really interests you, but think about too, like what, what you're going to gain from it. Not, not too clear on that. No, I thought that was a good answer. That gut, that gut instinct, right? Um, and then just one more question at the beginning. So could you, for people that maybe don't know or are watching this later, can you clarify like the timing between an MS degree, a master's degree and a PhD degree or getting your PhD? Oh, how long it takes? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so for a master's degree, um, at least two years. Um, and it really depends on the type of research you're doing. So if you are, um, because sometimes in, in fisheries and wildlife, you might have to have an extra field season um, if you're doing like work out in nature. Um, but we'll say we'll say two, two to two and a half years. Um, PhD four to five. And do most people in EEC do they do their master's first and then their PhD or yes. Okay. Yeah. So I I would say that's definitely more common. Um, you know, there's some that have gone, some people I know that went to a PhD directly, um, but many do a master's degree first. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks again. This was awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. And I guess, yeah, I'll put this, maybe if I put it in the chat, I'll put my email. Um, I'll do it right away before we get off. Um, so if 
anyone out there wants to grab my email and if you send me an email and ask for links, I've got all the, I've got links for like those different job boards and stuff that I can send back to you in an email. I'd be happy to do that. Great. And then when this gets posted on YouTube, if anyone's watching it later, I'll comment on the YouTube feed with everything that we've put in the chat. So um, it should be on there as well. Awesome. Maybe not your email, just so everyone on YouTube doesn't email you. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, go viral. Well, last last year, um, well, I won't say. It, but my voicemail was all over YouTube. <laughs> my voicemail message. So yeah, it was kind of funny. It's cool. Well, thanks everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording, and um, we'll see you for the next career um, workshops. And thanks again, Dr. Glarowitz. No problem. Have a good day.